you know, I think that kind of comes back to the Hyperloop. Like what, yeah, what was yeah. so difficult about that? And how did, how did that experience like help you realize that you wanted to be a founder and that, you know, it was, that was the path. So I think with, with Hyperloop, um, like Hyperloop's like, it, it's not just like, I think a lot of people see like the press coverage for like the Hyperloop competition and assume it's like one day. Um, it really takes the span of a year to develop and uh, produce that pod. Um, and generally like you'll spend like a good six to eight months designing the pod and, or designing the pod in CAD, doing simulations, um, doing like all the electrical design for it. Um, and then you'll spend, uh, maybe two, three, four months manufacturing it and like acquiring the parts and assembling everything. Um, and then you get out to SpaceX and you actually have a full week of testing. So there's like around 130 different tests that you have to pass. Um, just to get your pod in the tube. So like there's maybe like four or 500, 600 teams that like, you know, submit proposals every year um, after the whole like process of reviewing like the submissions and the, the interview process, um, it's narrowed down to like 20 teams that are invited to compete at SpaceX. Um, usually only three or four actually make it in the vacuum tube. Um, so that testing process is brutal, wow. even for like the top teams. Um, and so the uh, well-funded, well-organized teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's like this one European team that had like they flew out their pod on a private jet and they're working out of like a private air hangar. Um, like I think our team, our team's budget was around like eighty thousand dollars, including all the logistics for travel and like shipping the pod out there and like providing like uh, you know places to stay for everyone. And definitely uh, could even use all that to get a private <laughs> jet. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know I think. Um, the top team, um, Tom Technical University of Munich, their budget was around like $1.7 million and they're on like building and, and it was crazy. Uh, like the European teams are really good. Um, don't get me wrong, they're really good. Uh, but yeah, so competing against them was really, t really tough. But uh, I think what the hardest thing was is that around like four days in, we realized like there was just a bunch of mechanical issues that we had in the pod and we needed to fix. Um, we were behind on a lot of the electrical things as well um, and electrical testing because that was dependent on the mechanical testing um, to pass. Uh, and, you know, the team wanted to give up and I really didn't want to give up. I, I, I really viewed it like, you know, the Hyperloop competition is like this really unique opportunity. Um, we've got, you know, this could be our first and last time being there um, as like competitors. Uh, you know, we it's not like... We, we just got in this year and like teams are really competitive. It's really hard to get into the top 20. And, and I feel like, I felt like it wasn't good to stop with one day left of testing. And even if we know that we're not going to make it in the vacuum tube, that we should keep going to just see how far um, we can get along through the test and like pr improve our rank. The, um, and, and even at this point, uh, the engineers who were helping you, they were like, you should just stop. Because, yeah. because you were you were kind of behind on the test. There were there were like a, your wheel was messed up. Um, there were some issues there, and the engineers was like, "Just go and enjoy the city." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's one there's one boring company engineer that told us, uh, you know, like honestly, it's like it's really hard. You can it's honestly just party in L.A. If you're in L.A., just enjoy it. And and I I hate and that infuriated me. I was really upset. I didn't I didn't say anything, but. Um, internally, I was very upset. Um, and it felt like we were giving like the losing speech a day before we actually lost. Like, we don't know how far we're going to get. Um, you know, and this is a competition. We're here to win and get as close as we can to winning. And any less is just, you know, not acceptable. Um, and we should continue to work as hard as we can. You know, it's we've already like spent a year working on this. We've already, uh, you know, during testing week, we've gone through that whole process of being beat up by these engineers and <laughs> getting through that, that process and like fixing the pod and changing things and working late hours and like being sleep, sleep deprived for a whole week, we can hold out for one more day and keep continuing. Um, and I just wanted to continue. Um, and I think and that you guys were like, huddled in a circle. Like you guys were like listening to the losing speech. Like your leader was giving the losing speech. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was, I was like, you know, at that point I was in tears and I, I quoted Elon his like thing about like, Oh, if something's important enough, you do it anyway, in spite of the odds of failure. Um, I gave that quote and convinced a few people to keep working. Uh, and then at a certain point we just kind of gave up mechanically, but on the electrical side, we, we never gave up. And, um, you know, it was like 
I kept working on some of the soldering and, you know, a lot of the software people ended up staying up that night and continuing, even though the, the team overall had, had kind of folded. Um, and, you know, I think that was probably the hardest knowing that uh, we didn't, uh, you know, we gave, we kind of threw the towel in and gave up early. Um, I was pretty upset with myself for months after. Uh, and I realized like, I, I don't want to be in a, I want to be, if I, from now on, if I'm running things, I want to be in a position to choose uh, one to throw the towel in. And the answer is like almost never. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And yeah, exactly. So that's how you were like, okay, I need to be a founder. <laughs> I can't be relying on other people that will quit ahead, quit early. Dude, I think that's an amazing yeah. moment where you kind of just like stood up to you in front of the team and was like, well, I'm, I'm not a quitter. <laughs> if it's, if it's worth it, you keep doing it. I think I love that story when you first told it to me. Um, yeah. And so now you're working on this. So you're planning to move to San Francisco.